Hello, today I'll be coding this thing, which is a bit more complicated than it seems, especially because I want to do it in at most 100 lines of generated CSS. Uh, the thing is, here I have 64 cubes. So this means 3 times 64, 192 um, lines of code just to position each one of them in 3D with a transform. So that's not an option. Let's see what we can do. First of all, we're going to set a number of cubes along one edge, and this one is going to be 4. Then we're going to have the total number of cubes, which is this sub p value cubed. I'm going to have an assembly, then loop, uh, create the 3D shapes, which are the cubes. For every one of them, I'm going to set a number of faces, a number of visible faces, which is 3 in this case. Then I'm going to loop again and create the 2D shapes, which are the faces. Now, here I'm going to set an edge length, and this one is going to be in viewport minimum units so that it scales nicely. Um, my 2D shape is going to have a width equal to that edge length. Same goes for the height. going to set a background, just a dummy background, just so that we can see stuff. Um, okay, what is wrong with you? 2D shape, uh, you should have compiled to that. Okay. Okay, this should do it. Um, now, I'm going to set on all this, I'm going to set some styles, and these are going to be position, absolute, uh, transform style, preserve 3D, because I want to have 3D transformed elements within other 3D transformed elements, and I'm going to have more stuff, but uh, that later. Here I'm going to have top 50%, left 50%, and this puts my assembly in the middle, and I want the square right in the middle. So here I'm going to set margin, which is going to be minus half the edge length. Um, and here I'm also going to set some transforms. So transform, uh, rotate x minus 35 degrees. And similarly, I'm going to have pretty much the same along the y-axis. So y-axis here. And uh, also 45, not 35 in this case. And I am done with the assembly styles. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do here is set a transform. And this one is going to be a rotation in 3D. So rotate 3D um, along an axis described by a vector with the components i, j, and k. So, um, and 90 degree, a 90 degree rotation. Okay, um, I misplaced that, that's J, and this is K right here, um, okay, and next thing that I'm going to do is have a translation forward by half an edge length. Okay, now I'm going to have a loop here. Um, so what I'm going to do first, here I'm going to set these initially to 0, i, j, k, so j and k, um, and here I'm also going to set their names in a vector list. I'm going to compute the number of dimensions. Okay, and knowing this, I'm going to uh, come back here, and I'm going to have nth child i plus 1, and here I'm going to need to interpolate to set the custom property. So this one is going to be nth, and the component in the vector v at index i plus 1 is going to be 1. 
So now I have my cube, but it looks ugly, so let's prettify it. Um, I'm not going to need anything more in the div, so I'm just going to leave the styles at that. I'm going to compute an n, which is the length of that color list, list of color lists. Um, and I'm also going to compute a p, which is the length of just one list. And I'm also here, I'm going to have a stop list, a list of stop lists, actually. So for i from uh, 0 to n, I'm going to have a current color list, which is n uh, c at i plus 1. I'm going to have a current list, which is initially empty. And I'm going to have a unit percent. So this unit percent value is going to be 100% over p. And then I'm going to have a loop for i, uh, for j, sorry, j from 1 through p. And then I'm going to have um, the color list is its previous version. Uh, and I'm going to take from the current color list the one uh, at index uh, j. And um, position is going to be at j times the unit percentage. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to have if i is uh, smaller than p, then I'm going to have uh, pretty much the same, except this is going to be j plus 1. And uh, the stop value is going to be at 0. And finally, Okay, what's wrong? <sighs> oh, sorry, J, smaller than P. So here, finally, I'm going to append to the stop list, the current list. So uh, this does it. And what I'm going to do here is create an after, which is going to have display uh, block. And then I'm going to have height p times 100% uh, background a linear gradient. And I'm going to use a stop list there, and then I'm going to have content. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have the stop list is I'm going to take the list of stop lists, and I'm going to take the one at index i plus one. So um, this should do it. Okay, uh, and it works. Now the next thing that I'm going to set here is going to be a transform which is a translate y on um, calc and I'm going to have an n here times and I need to interpolate this uh, minus 100% over actually I only need to interpolate p but it doesn't really matter okay so um, for the 3d shape which is my cube I'm going to set this n. It's initially to 0, but it can be 1, uh, which makes the cube orange. So um, let's set overflow hidden here. And I can collapse this whole thing. I'm not going to need it. If I set 2, I'm going to have the yellow cube. And if I set 3, I'm going to have the purple cube. Now let's go back to the first one. And one more thing we're going to set here is transform, which is going to be a position. And this position is going to be um, translate 3D. And it's going to have an X component, a Y component, and a Z component. 
so on yeah and now we need to compute them so we're going to have x is calc uh, and here i'm going to have i minus uh, something that i still need to compute and something else that i still need to compute so uh let's go back up um so here i'm going to have a q and this one is going to be half of p minus one so on uh, this is the midway point and i'm also going to have an offset which let's say it's going to be 1.25 times uh d um l the edge length sorry so uh here i'm going to have a q and d so next thing that i'm going to do is just uh, set them all so i'm going to have j and k and here i'm going to have y and z and here um the y-axis points down not up so it's going to be with a minus then i'm going to have a loop so for i from um zero all the way up to p and here i'm going to have i'm going to set the i nth child um i times p times p plus one so this is going to give me uh, i is the loop index now the thing is i don't really need to put it like that so i'm going to have if i is some um, greater than zero because i don't need to set it if it's zero so i'm going to have something similar for k um except here i'm going to have just an i sorry so this is going to be n plus and this one is going to be p n plus so i've set the i and the k and i should have a plane um p sorry okay so uh this uh, does it now i need to set the j in order to have something in 3d um this is a bit more complicated here so i'm going to need to set for uh, j from 1 to p so uh what i'm going to do here is i'm going to have a minimum and this minimum is going to have i times p times p plus j uh, times p plus one and then i'm going to have a maximum which is the minimum plus p minus one and here i'm going to set it within the limits so nth child uh, n plus the minimum and um, pretty much the same except i'm going to have minus n plus the maximum and i could set uh j uh to j here but i'm not going to do it uh i'm not going to set j to j here i'm going to uh create a silent class so um, that they're all grouped for i from one to p um what i'm going to have here is j i so here i'm going to set j to i so what i'm going to do there within the loop i'm going to extend that class so okay so i have the 3d structure now for the really complicated part um getting the colors so i'm going to have something uh, pretty similar to this actually um this is going to be my starting point it's a bit more complex than this um so here i'm going to have uh j and i um and the maximum is going to be j plus one uh times p times p okay 
and now that I have this this one is going to be not from 1 to B from I to B and here I'm going to have another loop for K from I to P and here I'm going to have nth child and this one is going to take a uh, P n plus um, k plus 1 and here I'm going to have extend um, this is not going to be it's going to be um, n so what I really need to set here is n i so n i so this is going to be a silent class that's pretty similar to uh, the J1 um, so uh, let's go up and we're going to take this and copy paste it and replace J with N and this should do it okay this uh, this did it so I am done with the positioning so now the difficult part is over let's add a simple animation we're going to have keyframes breathe uh, two and here I'm going to add a function uh, because I want to simplify the scaling so I'm going to have function uh, scale fading uh, taking one factor and it's going to return scale 3D uh, factor 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 so now that I'm done with this um, so uh, by default this is one okay now that I'm done with uh, this I'm going to uh, set take this transform from there and uh, set it here 0.25 uh, and here I'm going to set 1 actually just the default and I'm going to have animation breathe um, 1 second ease in out infinite alternate so um, this uh, should uh, give me an animation but I don't want all of them to animate at the same time so I'm going to take this out um, and set an animation duration here so I'm going to uh, come back here and I'm going to set a calc volume and this one is also going to depend on n and it's going to be multiplied with uh, minus 2 times t over p so uh, this should do it uh, but I want to uh, tweak this animation a bit more so here I'm going to set uh, 0% 25% so uh, this should do it This should be a nicer result, I believe. Okay, uh, this looks way better. So now let's see the compiled CSS. And we have 100 lines of uh, generated CSS, which is exactly what I wanted. So yeah, this is it for today. You can find a link to the finished uh, demo in the description below. And if you have any questions, you can drop them in the comments or send them on Twitter. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have and you want me to be able to do more stuff in the future, please consider supporting my work in one of the ways explained in the description. With a donation, by getting me something off my Amazon wishlist, or at least by sharing this to show the world what can be done with CSS these days. Because I think it's pretty damn cool. In any event, thanks for watching.